Uh, Luke is from cryptic.com and also cryptic.io, uh, both worth looking at. And he's going to come and talk to us quickly about um, some business models that he's been uh, working on. Please welcome Luke as he comes. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, I'd just like to thank Tim for having me here. I was a bit of a late minute, last minute ring in. Uh, I flew over from Adelaide. I would like to say that I came a long way, but Stefan beat me to the punch there. Uh, I know that the food's getting served up pretty soon, uh, well, actually right now by the look of things, and I understand you guys are probably interested in having a bit of a chat after the last few minutes of presentation, so I'm going to jump through some of this pretty quickly, and I think some of this has already been addressed uh, to some extent anyway. But by brief introduction, my name is Luke Loam. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for a company called Cryptic. We're a cybersecurity blockchain company, which I'll tell you a little bit about later. Before I do, I thought I would uh, sort of continue the flow of the conversation in terms of you know a bit about the blockchain, you know how to buy and sell, uh, what does the ICO landscape look like at the moment. Um, so I think uh, Stefan gave a, a nice introduction in terms of uh, what, what the blockchain's all about. It's really about taking the middleman out of the transaction. It's about this trustless peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Uh, and in terms of use cases, which Stefan also touched on, so I'll go through this quickly, there are many, many more use cases than the digital currency. Uh, and just coming back to one of the questions over here in terms of what was the, you know, what's the future of Bitcoin all about? Uh, as a digital currency, it's really not a good digital currency. That's the reality of the situation. Transaction times take 10 minutes, even longer sometimes. So if you want to buy a house, then that's no problem. But if you want to buy a beer at the bar, you're going to be standing and waiting for 10 minutes while that transaction is approved. The transaction cost is also not insignificant. We're looking at anywhere from five, uh, five to eight dollars at the moment for that cost. Again, if you're buying a house, that's a small price to pay, but if you're buying a beer at the bar, then that 5 to $8 is going to add a considerable margin on top. So in terms of being a currency, it's not really a good currency, and this is why a lot of you selected option, I think, B, or, uh, uh, which was the digital gold. But there are a lot of other applications for the blockchain in terms of the, the various use cases. Here is a very complicated little chart that we're going to fly through very quickly. Uh, we've got uh, a range of different functions here, looking at the banking, the financial and fintech centre, which we've already touched on, uh, looking through cloud storage, which is something I'll talk a little bit more about as well, um, cyber security, again, which we'll get to, education, governments and voting. Uh, my, my assertion to you is that the Australian dollar will be blockchain based at some point in time. It will get there. It will mean that you won't have to lodge a tax return because it will be done for you automatically. Uh, it's a scary reality, but it's uh, something that's certainly probably coming as we, as we grapple the realities of what the blockchain can offer us. It doesn't mean that there won't be a black market, but that black market will actually be driven by the blockchain as well, with anonymous coins such as Zcash or Monero, Dash to a lesser extent. There are other options out there that are filling in the hole there. So looking at HR, looking at insurance, the Internet of Things is a massive space where we have all these connected devices. There's a company called IOTA, which is leveraging their ability to communicate with each other. We have the legal industry, smart contracts being embedded into these, uh, into these blockchain applications through Ethereum. We have marketing, we have particularly medical and healthcare. All of your health records will be stored on the blockchain. Uh, it will help to secure this information, make it instantly uh, transferable and much more secure. Music, streaming, travel, real estate's a big one as well. Uh, and obviously, using tokens as a security base. Now, uh, just to touch on very quickly, there are a couple of different types of tokens. There is a, a utility token, which is used to drive an ecosystem, and there is a security token, which is used to represent value in an underlying asset. So real estate will be bought and sold using blockchain, using the tokens as well. There are a multitude of potential use cases for the blockchain as we move forward and discover that. And so obviously with all of these potential applications for the blockchain, there have been a huge number of companies popping up in recent years to try to identify the various opportunities here. This year alone, 1,580 published ICOs. It is crazy. 291 in January, up to 566 ICOs were published last month. We're only a, a few days through into, into April, we're already 271, looking forward to eclipse that again. So we're talking about a massive, massive frenzy as these companies 
are driving into the marketplace. Now, are they all valid? Well, certainly not. And so it's up to us to decide which ones are and which ones aren't. But of those that have raised, uh, sorry, of those that have actually been published this year, they have already raised 3.4 billion US dollars in 2018 alone. Now, I think Martin made a comment about 6 billion being raised last year, and he's correct. The ICO funds, if we look historically from 2014, 461,000 raised in 2014, 6 million, 2016, 2015, sorry, 94 million in 2016, and then last year is when things went gangbusters. $6 billion raised through ICOs, and already we're at 3.4 and only a third of the way through the year. So looking set to eclipse that. However, the market is a little soft. You may have noticed that we're in a bit of a bear market in the crypto world, coming off the highs from Bitcoin's lofty December areas there, but still we're looking at a total market cap currently of around 200 billion US dollars in cryptocurrencies, and that's not including Bitcoin. When we look at that historically, we can actually see that, uh, and this is only in the last financial year, and the last financial year was obviously uh, travelling along pretty slowly, and then around December things went pretty crazy, and they've come back down obviously from those highs. They needed to, it, it just went too exponential too quickly. Now, you would think that based on the number of ICOs that have happened, based on the actual value and the fact that of, uh, in total there's been less than $10 billion raised in ICOs, but the market cap is $20 billion, $200 billion, sorry, uh, that there's been some massive returns, and you'd be right. On average, if you would look at, use those figures, you'd be getting uh, roughly a 20x return on every cryptocurrency, but obviously it doesn't quite work like that. There are winners and there are losers, and there's something else you should also be aware of. There's a whole lot of scam activity out there as well. Uh, one recent report, whether these figures are entirely accurate, there are somewhat there, but even if it's half this, there are a lot of ICOs that were listed last year that had announcements on Bitcoin Talk and announcements threads that had websites that were announcing an ICO that were outright scams, that were looking to defraud their customers. Uh, some of those failed, some went dead, some of those are trading. Here's a uh, you might remember back of those little magazines where you had those two pictures that are a little bit different, try and spot the differences. See if you can spot the difference here. There's a, there's a guy giving a presentation in one and he's not in the other. This is actually some board members from UBS Bank. There was an ICO called DE Bank which uh, were claiming that they were partnering up with UBS. They were challenged on this claim and so they released this image saying that he was actually in bed with UBS. Turns out that that was photoshopped. And obviously a little bit untoward. Uh, another one which was a little less crafty was um, a company called Proteum and uh, these guys started raising money then all of a sudden their website went down and people were greeted with this word and that was it. So luckily they didn't raise a lot of money but those people that did put their money in had a bit of a nasty surprise. <clears throat> so it's it's definitely an area you want to tread cautiously in. I mean, apart from the outright scams, there's also the valid application of the blockchain. Blockchain is amazing technology, but it's not a panacea for everything. It's not going to solve every problem. And you see a lot of companies that are adding blockchain to their name or trying to in in incorporate the blockchain somehow, thinking that it's adding value, when in fact it's not. So how do we assess which ICOs are worthwhile and which aren't? Well, I'd be the last person to educate a room full of investors. It's the same old thing no matter where you go. You look at what's the problem that's being solved? What's the uh, opportunity that is being recognised here? What is the solution that's being offered for this opportunity? Is it a unique solution that's doing something in a different and better way? And how can we monetize this? Where's the revenue here? Once we have that, do we have a team that can actually execute on this? When we have a team then the biggest question you need to ask is, do you even need a token? Do you need a blockchain? Because often you do not. And so it's really important to dig into the weeds and make sure. Read the white paper. Often these companies will produce a, an academic report. Some are very good, some are a little less so. That will detail the fundamentals of why the blockchain exists and how it actually operates. Look into that to make sure that it makes sense. So using this rubric, in terms of how do we approach ICOs, I'd like to introduce one to you without stealing any of the play up thunder. Um, I am the CMO for a company called Cryptic, and we are creating uh, a new cybersecurity and cloud storage platform and essentially other blockchain for enterprise security. So what's the problem? I probably don't even need to tell you that so much. 
1.9 billion data records were breached or compromised last year. Hacks are happening every day, every second, and it's big companies that are feeling this as well. Often we don't realise until much later when they finally announce that a hack's actually happened. But these are happening all the time. It's a problem that's not going away. And as more and more of us are migrating towards the cloud, are putting our information on the cloud using software as a service, then this is going to increase and continue to increase. And you can see that with the cloud storage market forecast. Currently, cloud storage is a $25 billion market, uh, set to increase to $92 billion in the next four years at a roughly a 30% capital average growth rate, which is uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty healthy. Now, looking at, at this for a second, if for every $1 that's spent on cloud storage, there's actually $4 spent on protecting that data and on the cybersecurity aspect. But for every $4 spent on cybersecurity, $25 is being lost to cybercrime. It's a problem that's just not being solved. It's not being solved effectively. And it's approaching a trillion dollar problem now. It's a real one. And it's becoming so real that uh, I was having a, a meeting with a friend of mine recently and he told me his insurance company had written in to his uh, insurance terms that he needed to have a cybersecurity strategy. This is how real it is. So what are we doing? How are we solving this problem at Cryptic? Well, we're building the world's most complete cybersecurity and cloud storage platform. And, and what it is, is, it, is it's an in, encrypted, decentralized file management and storage platform backed by an immutable blockchain ledger that tracks, monitors, and audits every single transaction that happens within that environment. So you can control with your system admins everything that happens. If a file's going the wrong direction or the wrong IP is logging in, you have full visibility and insight. But beyond that, in terms of how it works in the nuts and bolts, oops, skipped one too far, a file is encrypted, split into five or more shards, re-encrypted, and then each of those shards is stored on a separate cloud storage provider. So a hacker would have to break into each cloud storage platform and then get through six layers of military-grade SHA-256 bit encryption just to get one single file, because every single file is ring fenced from the other. So it's, it's, uh, it's essentially unhackable, but it's more than that. And uh, apart from uh, offsetting the five major threats to the cloud, it's actually doing so at half the cost of traditional multi-vendor solutions and much, much faster than blockchain solutions like Seer and Filecoin, which are great for general cloud backup, but we're so fast, 200 milliseconds in fact, that you can still use it in a real-time business environment, just like you would with Dropbox or Google Drive, but with levels of security orders of magnitude better and features that transcend that. But it's more than that. We're also creating an open source ecosystem for cybersecurity that it, uh, is backed by the cryptic token. This token is the, uh, the fuel that drives the ecosystem, and it's also used to incentivize client adoption. It's used to uh, incorporate uh, our consumers. It's, uh, it's used for strategic partner alliances. It's used um, in a number of different fronts. And the cybersecurity ecosystem is essentially funding the development of the platform and offers incentives for this open source growth of the platform as well. We have a fully tested prototype. It's been tested by 40 hackers, pen tested, and it passed with flying cover, uh, colors. We had 40 plus uh, CISOs also have a look into it, and it did well. It's working really well. Uh, we like it. This is a very um, a rudimentary interface right now. Obviously, we'll be in, in improving that as we move closer to the, to the actual release. Proud to say we have a few awards. We won the Australian E-Challenge Cybersecurity winner last year. We're an Enterprise Security Magazine Top 10 Startup for 2018. And uh, I'm looking forward to heading off to Grand Cayman Island in two weeks to compete in a startup competition, which is conveniently placed right near the beach. Um, we've been rated well by some of the ICO rating sites. 98 out of 100 were an ICO to watch with investing.com. Five and a half out of fours. Sorry, four and a half out of fives. <laughs> Not quite, like, not quite that good. Not quite that good. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, and, and more importantly, we have some great partnerships. We're working with IBM. We're an embedded partner with IBM. And uh, while we have actually built the blockchain to work as an ERC-20 compliant token on the Ethereum platform, we're in talks with IBM to use their Hyperledger Fabric blockchain. Uh, we're also working with our trial customer founders, Credit Union, uh, who will be one of our early adopters in the States. Design Shift, who actually make a physical computer, which is like a Mission Impossible computer. You try and break into it to get the hard drive, 
and uh, it'll self-destruct, and AmbiSafe as well. We're also pleased to announce that we're, uh, we have instant liquidity. So when the ICO finishes, we'll be able to trade our tokens, and hopefully I can add one more to the list if Martin and I can have a beer together after. Uh, we're an Uber Del Delta order book and Rengem, and we have a, li a liquidity exchange with Bancor, which we're also integrated with. We have a great team, a great board. We're led by a quantum physicist. I'm certainly the slowest person on the team, and I'm happy to say that. Uh, we've got the guy who automated the New York Stock Exchange. We have some fantastic investors, advisors from around the world that are helping us to structure our approach as we take this to market. So where are we right now? Uh, well, we're just, um, we've just really launched our pre-sale, the token offering. We have a $25 million hard cap, a soft cap of $3 million, which we've already passed. So we are viable and we are happening, which is fantastic. We have a total market of 750 million tokens, and we're selling a, a third of those in the ICO. Another third is being held by a non-profit, which is then used to invest back into the ecosystem to incentivise these partnerships, to incentivise client adoption, as I mentioned before. Uh, the pre-sale is priced at 10 cents a token. Public sale is 20% uh, higher than that. And there are bonuses for higher investors. If you're interested, please let me know. The milestones, obviously, we, we launched just recently in February. Um, and the public sale commences in July. So we're in the middle of our pre-sale right now until July. The price goes up in, uh, in July. The ICO ends in August. We're on the exchanges in September. Our beta release is in April next year. And then we have a full market-ready product in June of 2019. That's all from me. I hope you enjoy your dinner. <laughs>